Happy Sunday, everybody. Hopefully you'll be able to see me and hear me in a minute. I'm going to hopefully get some comments tonight. So comment when you get in here so I can see if things are coming in. This is the hardest part. Facebook's been having trouble with live events. <laughs> so so make sure you comment something when you get in so I know you can hear me. Oh, yay. I think I'm going to get the comments. Hi, Teresa. How is everybody this evening? It's a nice evening. It's it's cool out. It's been kind of rainy. Everybody's hearing me okay? Cool. I'm glad. I think the comments are coming through. All right. Awesome. Great. Okay, so that so everything's coming through. I'm going to be able to see everything tonight on the same computer. <laughs> It's so much easier if it's only on one computer. <laughs> if I have to do two computers, it makes it hard. Everything's delayed about 30 seconds or so. And so um, for me to look at the, the comments, it's hard because it's like from 30 seconds ago. So how is everybody this evening? Are you ready to walk down the boulevard one more time? We're going to uh, get this pillow finished up tonight. And, uh, oh, the audio is better tonight. See, I don't have the air conditioner on, so I still think it might be the air conditioner. So uh, I do have a little fan, but it's just a little tiny fan running. Hi, everybody. Well, thanks for coming to visit me this evening. So tonight we're going to finish up our boulevard pillow. Um, I learned a lot doing this pillow because um, I've been playing around with the... Um, with the, the quilting designs a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and set my tablet back now, so I think we're going to be okay. Let me set this back and get it out of my way. Okay. So I've been playing around with, I played around with these, um, with these quilting designs. And so I did the quilting with those designs that I showed you last week. And I actually did do the, I don't know if you can kind of see it on the back. I did do the, the little ones with just the little um, serpentine because it's just, it's just so narrow. So I just did those instead of the little bats. I thought the bats would be cute, but I kind of got in a hurry to this week. I didn't get this done till today. So, But anyway, I had a fun playing with this with the, um, with the border feature. And I did find out one thing that worked better for me as I started this is I made a template, and I forgot to print out another one, but I made a little template with um, of the design in the size I wanted it, you know, for the border. And to get it started really nice and straight, I actually made the template, you know, I printed it out, and then I put one of the little snowmen on the guidelines, you know, on the, the, the vertical and horizontal axis. And I put this on there, and I started out using the camera, you know, the snowman, to center it. And then I used the border function for the rest of it, because then I knew it was um, good and straight to begin with. So I thought that worked out really well for me. And that was something that I figured out this week while I was playing with it a little bit more. Um, didn't think about that last week when I showed you. but um, Oh, and, and Denise got her third pillow done this week. That's good, because I knew you had to do three. That's awesome. So I played around with that this week. Um, you can probably see my, my, on the back of it better, there's my border than on the front because I've got some dark colors on the front. So I'll, t I'll hold it up so you can kind of see it here. So yep, there's the, there's that border. It, it is really cute. I really liked it. So I decided to do, to do that. Um, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the embellishments. Let me turn this around here. We're going to talk about the embellishments. Um, the embellishments for this were actually pretty easy, but there was quite a few little things. And so let's talk first about the embellishments. Now, I did do the assembly of this pillow um, kind of in reverse order than what they talk about it in the book because I had trouble. Um, they actually had you put the back on the pillow and then put the lights in. And I had a really hard time doing that because the, the pillow back was in my way 
trying to flip the pillow around to do the uh, lights. So I'm going to show you how to do it the way I did it. I did it. I did the lights first, and then I put the back on, and then I put the I put the pillow in, and then I put the embellishments in at the very end. Um, I like to put the embellishments in when the pillow is done, like when the pillow form is in there, because um, sometimes when you're using like the strings and like the twine and stuff, I find that if I do them before I put the pillow form in, I get um, like the strings are too tight when I put the pillow in there. So I like to do it afterwards so that I know that the strings and stuff are not going to be too tight with that added, you know, depth of the pillow. So that's how I did it. So they, they kind of did it a different order. I also made a pillow form. So we'll talk a little bit about the pillow form here in a minute. But let's do the embellishments first. Um, so I know a lot of you have been do working on this. So how is everybody doing? I know Denise has got several made. So how is everybody doing? I saw, um, I think Colleen posted hers. Yes, I, I, it just worked better for me, Denise. I had a hard time with the lights. I mean, the first time was really bad. <laughs> so after I kind of figured out what to do, um, after I did it today, I, it didn't take me nearly as long. So I, I'll show you a little trick that I did. Um, I wish I could have found a really good punch to punch the holes for the lights, but I, my crop a dial was one, one punch was too big and one punch was too small. And so I just ended up, excuse me, using the scissors. I mean, the scissors seem to work the best for me. Um, so we're going to show that in a little bit. So, okay. So let's talk about the embellishments first. These were really fun embellishments to do. So we turn this around and so you can see, I got my book laying here on my machine. And so the embellishments were um, the little sign, and that little sign goes on the um, Bella's Boutique. So these are really simple to make. So all you had to do, you use water-soluble stabilizer in the, in the um, hoop, and the uh, like, like uh, sew and wash or uh, wet and gone. That's the Floriani version. So... And so I, I made up my little sign, you know, I sewed it on my felt. And then that water-soluble stabilizer is nice because when you dampen it to get the rest of it off, it makes the little sign kind of stiff then. And then what I did is I took a large um, darning needle that was sharp on the point, and I went down through the little eyelets that sewed out on it, and then put my, my twine in, and then... I kind of held this up on my pillow to see about where I wanted to tie my knots. And I'm going to trim these off a little bit once I, once I glue it on. And um, so I think I'm going to, I'll go ahead and glue these on. I have a tendency to glue my embellishments on things instead of, um, instead of sewing them. They recommend some sewing and I, I have a hard time doing that. So I usually um, glue. So we're going to we're going to put this one on. So I've got this little sign all done. So this is the first embellishment was the grand opening sign. And I made I just tied my little bows. I kind of figured out about how big I wanted them and then I will glue the knot to the pillow here in a minute. So we'll do that at the end, okay? So that's the first one. That's pretty easy. It's just simple um simple little piece of applique. You put your water soluble stabilizer in the hoop. Um, you stitch out the little the, the little design, you know, cut around your felt, and then wash it out like the instructions say. So that's a pretty easy one. And then the second little sign was the same way, and it was it was just a little square sign. So this is the little square sign, and I did the same thing with this. This is done on the water soluble. And then what I did is I made just a little knot. I I just took a piece of twine and I glued it to the back of it because I wanted this, this is going to hang in the tree. And then we'll, we'll trim the top off once I get it glued. And I made a knot up here so I can glue the knot to the, to the pillow. Okay, so there's our little sign. And then let's see, what else was there for embellishments? Oh, we had to do, so we turned the page. We had to do the, there's a mini quilt. And I kind of pre-did these because I wanted this to move along so you could see me finish the pillow tonight. So, um, the these are quite easy that little in the packet 
there was the little printed quilt and the little printed bench pillow. Um, the one thing I did do with those, second here, got my other pieces here. Um, so what I did with those is I took, let me see if I can find the right side. So what I did is it told you to take a piece of, of uh, batting, and I wanted to use a real thin batting instead of really poofy because it was easier to get it turned. It's not very big, as you can see. So uh, I laid this, I cut around, you know, the edge, and the um, seam allowance was already built into it. And so I laid the batting underneath this, and then I just quilted it. So what I did is I took my, my foot, and I just sewed from corner to corner, and then I just laid my foot on that line and sewed about, it's about a half an inch. I just left my, my needle in the center and just sewed little diagonal so I did one diagonal from corner to corner I don't know if you can see it very well can you see it and then I did then I just laid my foot on this and I did the next side I just left my needle in the center and just laid the foot on it and then I you know did this side and then I did from this corner to this corner and did the same thing I made like a little diamond pattern on it so I just did that on the sewing machine it took me just a couple minutes and then you lay the the backing piece, whatever you wanted for a backing, on the front, and you just sew around it, leave a little opening so that you can turn it, and then you just hit, you just whip stitch that shut. And then on this one, I did, you can see I did take a little, um, I did go ahead and, and, and sew around the edge just to make a little edge there. Kind of, I sewed around kind of like where that purple, that purple edging is. Okay, so that, that made my little quilt. And then we're going to put this on a little piece of clothesline, so the twine, with a little couple of these cute little clothespins. So I think I'm going to clip my clothespins to the quilt so I won't lose them over here. And then we will do that in a minute. So I just made a, uh, about a, I don't know, 20-inch piece of twine so I had enough room to tie a couple bows on it, and then I can make it the size I want it. Okay. So that is the little quilt that was pre-printed in your embellishment kit. And then I did the same thing with the little bench pillow. So the little bench pillow, you did the same thing. Put a little bit of batting in there. And then um, I just stitched the batting. I kind of did a straight stitch along the top and the bottom. And then I did actually, then I did the same thing. Put the little backing on and turned it. I left an opening at the bottom. But the one thing I did do is put just a little bit of stuffing in it. I thought it looked, didn't look like a bench pillow. It was pretty flat. So I stuck a little stuffing in it um, to make it look more like a pillow so and then I just stitched it shut on the bottom okay and then we're going to glue this on too this is glued onto the bench um, that's on the second I think it's on the second or third panel third panel so we'll, we'll glue that on but isn't that cute I thought that these were really fun little embellishments to make so I've, I've, that's what I've been working on today um, you also need for embellishments a couple of these these are those they have the most darling buttons and I have most of them at the store. These are cute as a button, and they have two sets and all these different colors, and there's a bunch of different sizes and different little prints. So there's like polka dots and little um, ginghams. They're really cute, and then plain ones. So you need um, some little tiny, tiny little buttons. You can use any buttons, but these are just so cute. So I had packages of these, and I took one out of each. I think it was orange, black, and yellow I think I used. So I got those glued on. I actually did glue those on to the pillow already. That's the only thing I glued on just because I um, I knew that those would be okay to not be in my way. So so I did glue those on to the pillow all right. already. Okay. So that is our basic embellishments. And those were starting on page, I think, um, 26. So those were the, page, the pages that had the embellishments. And then the next section talks about the backing and they have you put the backing on well I didn't do that till the end but let's just talk about the backing and I did make um, my backing a little differently like Denise did we Denise um, mentioned to me that she'd make and made her backing longer so they called for a half a yard to make your backing and I so I tried the first one with the half yard and I know why they did it because they wanted to try to conserve fabric but it made the center panel so narrow that 
you didn't have enough overlap on the ends. Now, I really like the way they did this panel, though. So what I ended up doing is I would tell you to buy a yard for your backing, and you're going to cut two pieces. So like the, the, the one piece, the center piece, there's actually three pieces to this back. They used to just do two pieces. But there's three pieces, and it works really well, and it's a lot easier to get the pillow into the, the pillow form into the pillow. Um, I cut the um, center section 28 inches and the, the two end panels still 10 inches. So that way I had much more overlap because when, when you do it the way they tell you to do it, this middle one is only about 20, I want to say it ended up being like 23 or 24 inches. And so you had about an inch on both sides of overlap. And so then the pillow was just opening up on me and I don't like that look. So I just made this 28 inches. So these envelope backs, this is a basic envelope back, but it just has two ends instead of, you know, there's three pieces instead of two. So what I did is I cut one piece, what you're going to measure your pillow from, you know, top to bottom here. So here's my pillow, and I measured it from top to bottom. It was about 16 and a quarter inches. So that's what I that's what I cut this. So you'll need to measure your pillow because everybody's pillow may turn out just a little different. Um, they're probably going to be somewhere between 16 and a quarter and 16 and a half inches tall. So I measured that, and I, that's what I cut this piece of backing, and I made it 28 inches. That seemed to work really well for me. And then the other two panels, as you can see, they made them 10 inches. So I also made my panels 10 inches. Then what you need to do on an envelope back, and we've done this with some of my settee pillows too, you're going to turn over the, um, you're going to turn over about a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch again, iron it down and just stitch down so you have a nice hem on the one side and the other side's going to be raw. Okay, so I did that on my two small panels and my long panel, all right, on both sides. So the long panel, you're going to do both ends, the two shorter ends, okay? And then here's my other panel. Now, be watch your, watch your fabric because now this fabric was not really directional. This was my second. I had two yards of uh, of um, Halloween fabric, and um, this one wasn't really directional, but my other pillow, if you give me a second here, I had to be careful that this one, because this one was, so I'm going to hold this up so you can see. So this one, you can see there's a lot more overlap. See, I've got about five, four or five inches on each side. I like them to overlap more like that. But you can see this um, fabric was dimensional or was directional, so I needed to make sure that I had all the cats going right side up. <laughs> so when you cut it, make sure that you're you're okay because see, here's the other end here. Okay, so this one was 28 inches and then the two end panels are 10. And then I just did my little hem on each side. So this there's a hem here, hem on both ends of this, okay, like that. So, but this one, just watch your fabrics. If you have a directional fabric, that's fine. This was one of the once I got at Walmart last year on clearance after Halloween, I just thought it was so cute because it looks like my cat. I have a I have a black and white tuxedo cat, so I just thought it was kind of cute. So I put it on my first pillow, and then this one has little the little ghosts on it. So this one wasn't directional, so I, I didn't have to be quite so careful. But I just got my hems in there, so I pre-did this for you. I think you understand what I what to do. But I did make I used a whole yard. There's you know a chunk left, obviously. But I used a whole yard because I wanted this centerpiece to be 28 inches long. Just gave me a nice overlap and everything is going to fit better. Okay? So there's my backing. So we'll use that in a little bit. We're going to set it aside. And I know you're just dying to see how to put these lights in, right? Oh, let's talk a little bit about the pillow form since we're right here. Okay, so I made my pillow form. It's very easy. It does take quite a little bit of stuffing, but it's super easy. It's on the last page, and it shows you how to make your pillow form. You cut two pieces of muslin. I actually had um, today. I made one today, and mine's made out of Kona, just Kona cotton. I just had some white Kona cotton left over. 
So mine's Kona cotton. I cut two pieces that were 16 by 38. And then I just put them right sides together, sewed all the way around, left an opening at the bottom, stuffed it. And you don't want to get too over exuberant with your stuffing. You know, don't, you want a nice firm pillow, but you don't want it to be so oversized. So just be careful that you're not using too much stuffing. And mine's nice and, and, and firm, but it's not too hard. And then just uh, go ahead and sew up your the bottom of this. I had one of those, um, what do I say? I had one of those five pound, you know, those boxes of uh, morning glory stuffing. And I know I got two pillows plus several other things out of that one box. So it was, I had plenty of stuffing for that. So, okay, so the next section then, so we're going to go back to the backing. We'll put the backing on tonight, and I'll show you how I get the pillow in there. But the first thing, the next thing we need to do is put these lights in. So before we put the backing on and stuff. Okay. Now it shows you a little bit about inserting the lights on the last page. And um, I struggled a little bit with the lights, especially the first time. And you have to be careful with your lights because um, they're, they're like little wires. And just be careful because I did the first time I broke a couple of the wires. And then if you break the wires, the lights don't work. Okay, so they're like little wires. So I'm going to bring you over here to this other table so you can see a second here. Clamp this on to this other table here. And we're going to talk about the lights. So this is how I did my lights. Um, I laid the pillow top. And, of course, there's batting in there. And the first thing I did was I took a very small scissor. I'm going to try to bring my computer around the corner here, too, so I can see a little bit better what I'm showing you so you can see me. Get this turned around this way. Okay. So you need to walk, look for all your eyelets on your pillow. And what I have, I have these little sharp Ginger scissors. And they're very sharp on the tip. So you just want something that has a very, a very good a sharp tip on the end. And I went through and I found all the eyelets all through the, quilt, the top. And I poked through the back. And just be very careful of your fingers. So I poked through through to the back and twisted it a little bit and remember there's three layers here so the, then what I did is I turned everything over and I would twist from the back also to make sure that I had those holes opened well and can you see my holes so I have part of this done because I didn't want to have to put like every light in because it does take a little while I'm not gonna lie to you um, to put these lights in and so I do and then I sometimes have to use the scissors as I'm putting the lights in so when you look at these lights um I was going to look show you a whole string let me a second here I didn't grab my other string I've got an extra string here that I can show you the ones I've got in here are partially inserted there we go so when you get them out of the package Got to lift this wire up so I don't sit on it. There we go. Okay, so this is what they look like when you take them out of the package. And there is a, this is the all the lights, and then you have to uncurl it, and then this is the little battery pack. Now, what works best for me when I'm doing this, actually, is to turn the lights on, because then I can see what I'm doing. And um, so I had them turned on when I was started to work with them. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to show you how I did this. You want to work from the outside in. And there's about 20 lights on each one. Now you will have to... Um, yes, uh, Cindy, yes you can. If you want to use your same pillow form, you can. You can just make the pillow form once and then just you know change your covers. So I, I made two pillow forms because I figured one of these would be at the store. But yes, you can do that. Okay. 
So what I did is this is the little battery pack, and the first light is in about, I don't know, six or eight inches. So I started with my battery pack over here on the edge, okay? And the first thing I did with my battery pack was to actually tape it to the back of the pillow. And what I've been doing is using the Kimberbell paper tape because it works really well. And I know this might not look real neat on the back, but my I tape my lights to the back. I mean, it seems to work for me. And then they don't flop around. And when I get ready to put the pillow in later, this is all covered up back here and then the pillow's not gonna pull all these wires out. Okay, so that's the one trick that I found that worked for me. So I kind of tape my battery pack here and I turn my battery pack on. Okay, so I started up here and this is the first hole right here that I needed to put one into. Okay, and hit one here. Now there is, you're gonna have to skip some lights because like from here over to here, there's a light right here, and I had to just tape it to the back of the pillow. So I actually kind of turned it going the other direction, and I taped it down. So you can, can you see my tape on here? You can hardly see it. It's right. But I, I've been putting my paper tape over the wires as I put them in. And I'm going to show you over here how to put them in. But I wanted you to see how they were kind of going. So I had to skip one right here, and then I had enough wire in between. So here's the, the the little or the boutique. So like these, I could use lights right in a row because they're pretty close together, okay? But then I had to skip way over to the tree because you're going to do about half the pillow from each side, okay? So then see there's a light here that I had to skip. So I actually, I have it kind of shooting to the back of the pillow instead. And actually this one I had to do two. So there's two lights here I had to skip, all right? And then when I got to the center here, this is the tree. So let's pull it up over here. So here's the tree. Now the trees are a little weird. I had a little trouble because I have to kind of hold the lights down and see which direction they work best. So let me show you on this one what I did. Because they're kind of hard, you got it. You, you only got just so much wire in between these things, and you got to get it in here. So, like here's the two I skipped, and then I had one here, and then I kind of shot up this way and down, and then I had to skip another one to get back up to here and across. I just needed to make sure I had one for here. There's one hole here, and then I have to go up to the house in the center here, and that's. Uh, Broomhilda's Bakery. So there's one set of lights here that were from the other side, and that's this is about the middle of the pillow. So you're gonna you're gonna end up somewhere around Broomhilda's Bakery here for the two lights to meet. Okay. So I have a few of these left to do. So let me show you what I did. So here's my string, and like I said, it worked better for me to turn them on because then I could see you know where I was going with these. Get this little closer here. And I've got a hole right here. This is the last hole for the tree. So what you got to be careful of is these are wires. And don't bend these too much because if you bend them too much and if you try poking, the, poking it through too small of a hole, you're going to bend those little wires and they're going to break and then none of your lights will work. So I did that the first time. I'm not going to lie. I had to, I had to get some more lights. Okay. So I've got my hole here. Whoop, there my scissors go. And I am going to make this just a little bit bigger from the back, just to make sure I can get that light up through there. And what I figured out is if I bend the wire carefully, these lights, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they have kind of, they're kind of plastic. Can you kind of see that? They're, they're, there's like a little uh, knob in the middle, and then there's like two little fingers on the ends. So if you bend the wire on one end to make kind of a little point, you can stick the light through the hole and it makes kind of a point and see it goes through there pretty easily. And if you don't have a point, it didn't go through very easy. So then, and see now you can see why I didn't want the back on. This is so much easier. I did this and then I flip it to the front 
And here's the light, but you can there's the wires. And what I wanted to do is I'm going to grab a hold of the wires. And you want to kind of take it and carefully twist the light so those two little fingers kind of stick in the hole. And I just kind of twisted it. Oh, Nancy, no, I don't. Um, I can get them, though. I know a place I can get them. So if you break lights, I can I can get you more. I do know where I can get them. Because I had some, um, actually, Judy had some that she used. So I, she had some extra ones for me. So I, so I kind of twisted this. And now, if you can see this light, it's kind of long. And it's, and it's going to kind of stick into that eyelet and stick in the front. So now, since I've got that one in where I want it, I'm going to flip this back over. And I'm going to lay this down. And see, that's where that wire is on the back. Now I'm going to take a piece of this tape. And these are LED lights, so they're not going to get hot. And I'm going to tape over that wire so that it doesn't move for on me. Okay? Because I had no luck with this until I started taping. And then I need to get up to this next one. So I need two more. So like this one here, there's two more, there's two more um, holes up here that are part of the, the bakery. And you can see this one here, this one light is, I don't need that one. So I'm going to lay it so that the light's pointing upward towards, it'll, towards the back of the pillow. Yeah, I think you can get them on Amazon, Denise. But I, yeah, I can buy them for it. I, I can get them through Brewers. So if people need them, I think they come in three packs. So they're not very expensive. And I'm going to put another piece of tape here to hold that in place for me while I'm working. And like I'm not being real super neat on the back because it, it's not going to be seen. However. If you were going to make a wall hanging out of this, I probably would um, be a little more careful with what I chose for tape, um, something that didn't show as much. Um, or you could also lay like a little piece of fabric over the top, over the top of the lights area, if it was going to be a wall hanging. But the tape just worked better for me because I was able to keep everything not moving around. Okay, so we have a couple more lights to do here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to also bend this right on the edge of the light because you now that little light, I can't bring it up too high. So that little light's kind of that kind of cone shaped, okay, on the edge and give me kind of a little, a little bit of a point so I can go through this hole. And I'm going to push this through the hole and my, my hole was big enough. So we're going to flip this over. There's my light. Okay, and I'm going to get a hold of that, and I want to kind of grab, you can see both the wires there, there's both wires there, and what I'm going to do is I've got a hold of it from underneath, and I'm just going to kind of twist it so that it keeps those wires kind of twisted out so it holds it in the hole like that, okay? Then I'm going to go back to the back, and this is that extra one right here. And whoops, where did my tape go? Here it is. So then I'm going to put another piece of tape over this little spot right here to hold it in place. And the paper tape worked real well for me. I had, I have lots of it because I use these all the time. Now we got one light left. So this, and it works out about right. You got, you do have to skip a couple of lights here and there. There's, a, you skip one on the end and one over this end, and you got to skip one to get to get to where you're going. This one then does not have a wire on the other end. So it'll still work fine through the hole though. So I'm going to push this up through this last hole like that. Let's take a look at it on the other side. Okay. And it looks pretty good. This one, what I'll do is I'll kind of bend it down so that that little finger holds it in place like that, and then I'm going to tape this wire down on the other side in place so that it won't move. 
and I also noticed that when I went to go to pull my pillow in, then, you know, my, my pillow did not disturb all these wires. I was so afraid that you'd get them all in here and not, if I didn't tape them, I was afraid that then when I pulled my pillow in, that I would disturb all these wires, okay? And these little pet battery packs, I just, I'm going to, I have them taped on the pillow right now over on the side here. I have it taped right here, but I will release that tape um, in a little bit when I go to put it in the, the pillow in. But I wanted to tape them back so I wouldn't hit them with the sewing machine. So I think we've got all the lights in here. I'm going to turn the other side on so you can see it. And I just kept doing that. I just worked from the outside in. Okay. So I, so I worked from the outside and like I said, I've got my battery pack right here, and I just taped it down so that it wouldn't move. Got the first one in, pulled it through, gave it a twist so that the little light sets in the hole. Okay, and then I move. Now this one, you can kind of see the lights in there, but it's okay. Those are the two. You had to skip a couple to get into this tree, and you have to kind of you know, figure out which light needs to go in which hole because there's there's only so many lights. And then I had to skip one over here to get over to this house. So this is the candy corn quilt shop. So then I had, these were very close together so I could use all of them, okay, along there. And then I went over here and I, I, I taped the whole time. So then I, I went up here and I had to skip one to get up to the Broomhilda's Bakery. And this was, there was like two or three lights I put in from this side string on this one. And this was the last one, okay? And then I had to go back and start on the other side. So we started on the other side. I did the same thing. Here's my little battery pack. I went up through the first hole. And these two were close enough together. Whoops, got to get it a little closer for you. These two were close enough together, okay? No, I probably wouldn't, Jan. I actually, if I was going to make a wall hanging out of this, I would have put pretty fabric on the back here. And I think I still would have, I think I still would have um, used the tape. But what I might do, just so that you don't see the tape on the back of the wall hanging, you know, it's going to be against the wall, so you, you probably won't matter. But I might have just taken a little cover and made a little cover to, just to cover up these lights. Because the tape really works really well, and it keeps everything smooth, and it's not going to come out that way. I was concerned that they would they would start moving around on me. So, so I would have put pretty fabric on the back of this. And so there's been a couple gals on Facebook that have actually done really pretty wall hangings, but they did they didn't put lights in it. They actually did it a different way. So, okay. So then we've got. So I came up, you know, here through the. The two little, the little street lights, and then I went over here to um, Bella's boutique, and then again I had to skip one over here, and to get up into the tree. And again, the trees were a little hard to do because you kind of had to figure out which way the lights would work the best to, to be most, you know, economized. And then I had to skip a light here and get up to Room Hill or to the bakery again. And there was the, the last two were up here in the bakery. Okay. And you can kind of take those little lights if you need to rearrange them just a little. You can take them and rearrange them from the front. But there's the lights. And it really did work better for me to turn them on. Then I could see, you know, what I was doing. So, okay. So now we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and turn them off right now. And then we're going to put the backing on. And let's get it turned over here. And then I'll turn these off. Now, the one thing I do want to do before I start sewing is I'm going to pull these the, these wires back. Make sure they're back away from the seam allowance over here so they're not going to be in the way when I go to sew it, okay? So we're going to move these over. I'll untape it over here, and I'm going to pull this over here. And we'll turn this one off, too. And then I'm just going to pull this over so that it can't possibly get stuck in my sewing okay but that worked the best for me is to do the taping on the back 
And um, for those of you who have did this, did some of the rest of you tape them too? Um, it just seemed to work better for me, and I knew I wasn't going to, it wasn't going to, stuff wasn't going to pop back out. Once I got it in there, I didn't want it to pop back out at me. I also would have liked to have had some sort of a punch. Um, somebody today on Facebook said they used some sort of an OESD punch that was, um, from what I can see, the, I had two punches. One was an eighth and one was three eighths, so we actually need a quarter inch punch, I think is what I need, to do the punching for the holes. Um, it would be a little easier on your hand if you didn't have to use the scissors, but the scissors work just fine, and I could um, make the holes any size I needed them. So um, I think that the scissors worked well for me. So that's how I've done this one anyway. Okay? So we got all the lights in. Now we're ready for the backing. So I'm going to put my backing on. So let's go back and look at that picture. And it tells you to... Um, turn your, your, um, hems in, of course, and you put the two ends on first. So we're gonna lay, yeah, you can use a leather punch, um, Jan. I, ha I tried mine, but I, ha I, it's so small that I couldn't get all this fabric in there. <laughs> so I would have liked to use my leather punch, but it wasn't, I, mine's a handheld one, and I couldn't get into the holes because it was too far from the edges. So we're going to put our ends on first. So let's see. I think I don't think there's really any direction to these. They were all kind of my all my ghosts. So we're going to put the ends on first. And you want the raw edges together. So we're going to have this hem on the inside. Okay. And I'm going to, a second here, get this lined up. We'll put a couple pins in here so we won't lose what we did. Sometimes I use the clover clips. It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes the pins work better for me, so I just use some pins. Um, I also like to double stitch these. So we're going to stitch this tonight. And I always double stitch around where this these um, pieces are. Oh, you got some of the purple ones. Yeah. So I had used, oh yeah, the, the orange one, that, that might work, Denise. I didn't know if it was quite large enough though. Cause if you, if you, um, if you don't have a large enough punch, um, I had trouble with my lights breaking. So I, that's why I didn't use a punch. I ended up just using the scissors. Okay. So I got one end done. We got to put the other end on. So you put the ends on first. Okay. Get this one. Uh, whoops, got go the wrong way. There we go. So this one needs to go. You have to put your hands on the inside. Don't turn it the wrong way. Oh yeah, that's good. So everybody's been taping. Yeah, the taping seems to work. I, I just didn't have any luck without taping, and they don't really tell you to tape in the instructions. So, and I had watched a couple of the videos, and I didn't watch see any of the videos taping, but. Maybe the ones that I'd watched, they didn't anyway. So did anybody see Kimberbell do a video with that they, that they taped the lights in? I mean, to me, it seems like it works really well, and you don't disturb them when you're putting the pillow in. I was concerned about, you know, pulling them out with the pillow. So, all right, so we're going to get this pinned on. Okay, so we got the two ends pinned on. So now what we need to do is put the center on. And you kind of have to do this. You have to kind of find your center of your pillow. So what I did is I just kind of folded it to make sure I knew about where the center was of my pillow. So you want to kind of center it in there. And you're going to be kind of in the middle of one of these blocks. So we'll just mark it. That's the center approximately and then we will do the other side so we know about where the center of it is so it's going to be in the middle of this orange block here 
and um, but you know I've seen several people make wall hangings out of them, and they didn't. Some of the some of the people didn't put lights in, and I I mean it was still beautiful without the lights. They and they also made them rectangular instead of long and thin like this. So I thought that was cool. People always have lots of good ideas. It's fun to watch all these good ideas. Okay, so then we're going to take this one and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the center of it. And I'll just finger press the center in of our backing. And, oops, let's see if I can get the other side here. So I had fun doing this today. I, I just, I didn't work too hard today. I kind of finished this up and put the lights in and and I enjoyed my day making the embellishments. I hadn't done, I hadn't finished all the embellishments and stuff, so I did all that today. It was kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to pull this, and then here's the other side. Oops, make sure we get it kind of where my finger press is here. There we go. Get that in the center. And we'll pin that on. get the rest of this so now if you look here see I have about oh there's about a good three to four inches of overlap on my sides right here so I don't know if you can see so there's about three to four inches here and that I wanted that because then they don't gap open I just don't like that that's they, I know that's the reason they did it with a half yard is they wanted to conserve the fabric but um, I think it works better with the longer center piece so this one was 28 inches is what I used. And Denise, didn't you say you used 27? You like my backing fabric? Yeah, I got that at Walmart last year um, after thank after Halloween. It was on clearance <laughs> for like, I don't know, $2 and a half or something. I thought it was cute. And I got the kitty cat fabric th at the same time. And I think I got some really cute like um, orange and black stripe. I think I might still have that. I don't think I've used that yet. So I'm just going to put some pins in here. Then we'll do the other side. But I like to have a nice overlap on these envelope backs. Otherwise, you just don't you just don't have enough overlap. And then the pillow, you know, pops out the back and looks kind of nasty. So I don't like the look of that. And yeah, this took a little bit more fabric, but you know, I like the I like it better, so I'm much happier with it now. I had to so I had to rip the back off. I was trying to do it like the instructions, the first one, and um, I did it as they told me to do it, and it you know it didn't work well to get the lights in because I couldn't get to the back, so I had to take the back off anyway. So I just redid it <laughs> at the time because I didn't like the way it looked. Okay, so. Then to make an envelope back, like we have many times, we're just going to stitch around. So I'll put, pull the camera over here, hopefully. Give me just a second to get the camera organized again here. And we're just going to stitch around the, the outside edge. We'll move the camera a couple of times today. So give me a second, I'm going to move my computer too. Yeah, my, my Walmart and Anamosa Jan has a lot of fabric. And I go up there every week and I get a lot of fabric up there. Just trying not to knock my computer over just a second here. Okay. Move this back over so I can see the comments. So I've got my um I've got and the one thing I do use when I when I go to sew these together, I like to use um polyester thread because I want it to be strong on the seams. And when I do these envelope backs, and then the other thing I like to do is when I go over, we're going to do a quarter inch seam, just so you know. Um, I like to go over these areas, you know, where that, that overlap is. I kind of go over the area and back up over it, because sometimes I've had these rip on me too. So I'm going to pick a, my quarter inch piecing stitch on my Q-tab, which is Q02. And that is the one that I can move that, that moves my needle to the right so that I can just put my foot against the edge of the fabric for my quarter inch. And I want this to be, you know, a full quarter inch. So I'm going to go ahead and 
tie a knot. And then since I'm on that area where the overlap is, I am going to sew over these. So I'm going to sew forward over this area because I've had trouble with these ripping. And then I'm going to back up over them because I've just had trouble with these ripping out on me. And that's why I also always use um, polyester thread because it's stronger than cotton thread. So here's the other one right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to back up over that area because I've had some trouble with these ripping when I, on these big pillows. These pillows are big and, and they're a little hard to get in because they're so long, you know. So that's where I usually get my pulling or ripping. And I've also learned that I don't use cotton thread. I often do piece with cotton thread and sew with cotton thread, but it doesn't work very well for these because you just need that strength. So I'm going to do my quarter inch. I didn't take my embroidery arm off, so it's a little bit in the way, but we'll be fine. Okay, so this other piece, that, that, that other piece that I was telling you about. Yes, I did get my machine back. This is my machine. Denise, yes. Um, it, was just the invert, it was just the foot controller jack. So... Um, I'm going to back up over that that overlap again. I learned this on my settee pillows when I was doing all my settee pillows, and I did post those. So we had a lot of new people, so the, I posted the settee pillows because I did a I did a Halloween one too. And those pillows, for those of you who are new, are much smaller than this one. They're 20, they're 12 inches by 22, so they they fit in a nice, real small. They're a smaller one. So I, had, I have a really cute Halloween pillow for that, too. So if you'd like a, another one to do that smaller. Okay, just a second. got to move my pen so I won't knock them off. So, yes, I got my machine back. It wasn't anything major, but, it, but they did have to replace the foot controller jack. So you wouldn't think that would cause the buttons not to work, but evidently it does. All right, so we went around the corner. And do the other side. I love envelope backs because I don't have to, you know, hand stitch anything. I can go all the way around the outside edge. and So I'm going to have to watch my, one of my battery packs down here decided it was going to untape. So I'm going to have to watch that when I come around the corner here. Get here to the end. Because I knew you wanted to have, get to see me put this pillow in this form. It's, it's kind of neat how I love these this three-piece um, backing because, man, it's a lot easier to... Looks like I need to take another stitch. Second here. And it's a lot easier to get the pillow in because these pillows are so big, you know. And uh, I had struggled with the first one I did to get it in there. Second here. Let me make sure I know where my battery pack is. There it is. We should be good. Okay, so we're coming up to another one of those overlaps. So I am going to sew over it. I'm going to go over it and then back up over it. So that's got some little strength there. And these are those those cool pins that I love that I, I am sewing over them. I'm not sewing over them real fast. Okay. That, that's Yeah, that's where that other piece is, so I'm going to back up over that one. Give it just a little strength. Yeah, I thought this fabric was cute with the little ghosts on it. I had two, I had two really cute ones, and I thought, well, I've got two pillows to make, and I had, it gave me an excuse to use those cute fabrics that I had. I didn't know what I was going to use those on yet, so... I pick up stuff like that, and I think, oh, I'll, I'll find something to use it on, you know. So, and, I, and when I was up there last week, they had some really cute. Yes, I don't you think like it, Denise? I really like it. It's so much easier to get the pillow in. Oh, my gosh. Because the first one I did, it was so hard to get the pillow in it. Because I used to just do, like, from one end. And this, now with the two ends, it's so much easier. All right, we're getting close here. Here I've got my raw edges even here. All 
All right, whoops, forgot to back up. I'm just going to tie a knot and back up again. I have to get that, that overlap so that it won't. Forgot to back up over it, so we'll go back and sew over it again. There we go. Do one more. Get this pin out. There we go. I'll remember to back up this over this one. There we go. So it's nice and strong. Get rid of that pin. Yeah, these pillows have been really fun. So the next one we're going to do is the um, Ginger's Kitchen. And we'll do that in uh, November. So if you haven't gotten the CD, I've got it up on the website. And I also have the um, embellishment kit. They have a new embellishment kit for that one. And then a few of you, actually quite a few of you, are, are wanting the little um, fat quarter bundle that I recommended for the fabric. And I'm going to order that. Um, in the next day or so. Now there is a light right here, so I'm just going to be real careful, okay? That I don't get too close to it. And um, so that's all up on the website. The the back quarter bundle. You need to um, vote on the poll on the group. And I've got a lot of you have already voted, so I think I know about who all wants the the fat quarter bundles. So I'm going to get those ordered either to probably tomorrow. I'm hoping because I need to get them ordered and um, then they will come. They promised me they would be coming in um, early to mid-October, which is just, you know, a week or two. So, okay, so here we're back to the other piece here. I'm going to tie it off and we're all the way around. So I think Ginger's Kitchen is going to be really cute. Now, Ginger's Kitchen was done a year ago. And the bench pillow, and it went was to go with, um, it was made to go with um, We Whisk Your Merry Christmas. So I just thought it would be fun to do it since we just did We Whisk Your Merry Christmas. All right, looks like I need to trim a thread here. Take these pins out, and then we will start to turn our pillow. Second here. Are there any questions? Is everybody doing? And yes, Jan. The Walmart is on the corner of Highway 151 and 64. It's out, out up on the hill in Anamosa. And she's the little gal that runs the department is really nice. And she is so excited because she's finally getting fabric again. Because they, they were just completely wiped out. And then they reset the department this time of year anyway. So she was, you know, was slow coming in. And so she's got some nice fabrics now. So. I found two or three really cool, I, I think I bought three yards of fabric last week, just some nice basic fall kind of browns and, and tans. Okay, so we've got our backing sewn on all the way around. So the way this works then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the camera back over here again so you can see. Give me a second, I'll move it to the other side of the table and we're going to put this pillow in here so that the, the way this three piece back works it is really cool so we're just going to turn it we're not going to turn the ends we're just going to turn the whole thing through the the middle part like this so we're just going to carefully and just remember you got those battery packs back there so just be careful not to pull on those so we're going to pull the whole thing right side out just through the center You just got to be careful of your battery packs. And I'm not going to turn the ends yet. Okay, so there's that. Okay, like that. So we got that part done. Then we're going to flip it over on the back. And I think I, whoops, looks like I need to tape my one battery pack back down here. So we'll. Get this tape down and get it out of our way. Cause I'm I just made I just left mine loose in the back of the pillow, so I kind of put them down at the bottom so I could um, find them to, to turn it on and off. But let me go ahead and put a piece of tape on this one just to get it keep it out of our way temporarily. Okay, there we 
go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is through this backing here, I'm going to put, give me a second, I'm going to move the, the computer again so that I can see what you're saying. Turn it around here, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pillow form and we're going to slide it. But see, I didn't turn the ends yet. This was so much easier to get the pillow form in. Oh, my gosh. Because the first one of these I did, I just really struggled. So here's the pillow form that I made. And like I said, I just made this. It, was, it worked really well. I am going to, the easiest way for me to do this is to put my arm up through here and get a hold of the pillow on the other end. My table's not very big, so I usually do this at my cutting table. But it was too it's too far away. So gotta get a hold of whoops, get that turned flat again. There we go. And I'm just gonna work this in to the pillow. Just be careful of your lights and don't pull on those battery packs. But the first one of these I made was a um, Christmas one out of the, I think it was out of Let um, Jingle All the Way. And oh my gosh, I struggled to get the pillow into the form. Okay. See how much easier that is? And then you want to kind of make sure, you know, you stop before you get it too far. <laughs> I think I kind of got a little too far, so I think I need to pull back a little bit. See how we did on the front there. How's it looking? How'd we do? Does that look pretty good? Okay. I think that looks pretty good. And it looks like I got my uh, pillow fairly well stuffed. I didn't get to overstuff it. I have a tendency to overstuff, so I have to be a little careful when I'm making stuff like this. But I wanted it to be easy to get in and out, so I didn't want it to be over, over large. Okay. And then... What's so neat, see now I can just grab here and make sure I know where my light boxes are. Okay. I can just pull back on those two 10 inch pieces and turn them, turn them over. This is so much easier. And I'm going to go out to the points with my little point turner if I can get my drawer open. And get my little points nice like that there's one end let's turn it over here and do the other side and this made it so much easier to get the ends so if I make more of these I will definitely do a back like this because it just it was so much easier, but I like the bigger overlap. Take my point turner to my corners. Now I didn't do grandma's little trick on these because it was just too hard to get my hands in there <laughs> with all this big pillow and everything. So there we go. I think I did pretty well. Let's turn it over and see how we did. All right, look at there. It's all in the form. I'm so excited. So now what I do then is I'm going to reach back in here and find my battery packs. And I'm going to untape them. And I'm going to pull them to the back of the pillow so that they're kind of laying along the back and then I can find them easy when I go to turn the lights on so I'm just done taping them and I'm just going to pull them around so that they're kind of laying right at the bottom corners here I'll take the tape off in a little bit but they're just laying the little battery packs are laying right here and then I can find them and we'll turn the lights on in a second okay what do you think how do we do looks like we did pretty well sometimes I have to shift the pillow a little bit I didn't quite get it quite as straight as I wanted, so I might take it out and do it again, but you get the idea. 
Okay. So now we have to put our we have to put our embellishments on. So this is the fun part. I really enjoy this part. And I'm actually getting better with um, hot glue. Thanks to Lynn. Lynn's been teaching me how to use the hot glue gun. <laughs> I'm not very good at hot glue, so. Do you like my background? You know, my background is just, um, my background is just, I got it at Walmart too, believe it or not. It's a, it's kind of a off white, like a winter white with little, little um, silver pet speckles in it. I thought it was neat. Okay. All right. So we got a, several, several things to put on here. So let's see. Let's, what, what, what should we do first? I want to do this last. So let's go over here. I think we're going to do the, let's do the bench pillow first. So the bench pillow, move my camera a little bit. Bench pillow is going to go into this little bench right here. Okay. And what I did, here's my little bench pillow. You can kind of test fit where you want it. And I'm going to glue that on. Oh, did you make, yeah, the little pocket. You can do a little pocket. I haven't had really any trouble finding mine, Nancy. I, I uh, just keep them down in the, in the back corners and I actually haven't had any trouble finding them. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to put a little hot glue on the back of this pillow. And actually, I think I'm going to put the glue on here because I think it'll be easier for me to put the glue on the bench. Okay. And put the built pillow on there. So it's kind of get it where you want it and give it a little push. So I like to put my, my embellishments on last because then I know that I'm getting things where I want it, especially with the string because I, I always have trouble if I have string. Okay, so there's that. And let's see, we got to put the little sign up here. I'm going to put this, hopefully you can see me. Okay, I'm going to kind of see where I want these. I wanted them kind of up on these little curly cues on the roof here. So kind of see where I want them. And I'm just going to, I'm going to glue the knot to the little curly cues on this. So I'll bring this over and I'm going to kind of lay it here where I want it. And I'm going to put a dot of glue on the curly cue and I'm going to put my sign knot, the knot from the bow, right in that glue. And I'll, we need to trim these little off, so we'll do the other side and then we'll trim these off a little bit. Get this one on. You always know you're getting towards the end when you get to do all this fun stuff at the end. See how I did for my, get my sign kind of straight. We don't want it to be too crooked. So it looks about right in there. Put a little dot of glue there. I got to finish up my other bench pillow, so I think I might work on that tonight. I've got a, I got another Christmas bench pillow to do. And uh, it's the, the other, another one from uh, Jingle All the Way, so I thought I'd try to finish that up. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's just trim off. These little strings are kind of long, so we'll just trim them off. I wasn't sure how big I wanted them, so I just kind of left them on. I thought we could trim them. There we go. That looks better. So there's my bows and my little sign for the boutique. Okay, and then let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got to put the sign on the other tree. So let's put the other sign over here on the tree. Try not to get glue on my pillow. here. Now we got the other tree over here and I'm going to look at my other pillow to make sure I got it kind of get it the same place. Let's see how I get it here. Get my other, there we go. So I think I put it out here on this branch. So I had a knot. I have a knot at the end of it here. Move this over. So I have a knot at the end of it and I want it to kind of hang right there. That looks pretty good, so we'll just put, I'm just going to put a drop of glue right in here. This is the little creep along sign, so we'll just put that knot in there. 
join our mystery quilt creep along like that and then we'll trim off the ends here make sure it's on there really well and then I'll trim these ends off okay so we got that sign on now we just need to do need to get the little um, quilt on here and I already got the buttons can you see the little buttons I had to make doorknobs so here's the little buttons for the door the doorknobs because so I had um, I had orange yellow and I think um, oh it looks like I've got hot glue hairs on my pillow but we'll get them off okay so now let's do the the quilt here so I wanted to put um, I'm gonna look and see where I kind of did mine So I wanted to, like a bow at the end, so I made this piece pretty good size, you know, like I made it like 20 inches long, so I had plenty of room to cut, tie a couple bows. So I tied a bow on the end here, made the ends kind of equal, and then I'm going to put one side here on the on the building like this. And then we have to decide, I want it to, let's see, I can't remember which branch I put it in. I think I put it kind of down here. And it needs to be fairly, um, fairly um, taut because otherwise the, the quilt will hang awfully low. So I had to kind of glue, what I did is I glued this end in kind of where I wanted it. So I kind of put it under the light. So I glued this in just kind of underneath this light right here. So I glued this side on first so I could kind of, it would help me tie the other end like that. And we'll trim that tail off again. So I got that on there. And then I'm going to decide where, I think I want it about right here. And it needs to be relatively taut. So I'm going to try to get my bow tied so that it's about where I want it about right there so Let's see if I can get it tied I'm not a very good bow tire but these don't need to be real neat so they they were kind of rustic looking bows on here second here I'm having trouble seeing it it's black and white <laughs> all right oh that looks pretty I'm getting close all right, just need to pull it this way a little bit, like that. And you want it relatively taut because this is going to hang right here on that little, it's like a little clothesline. So that looks pretty good, actually. Let's pull this just a little bit. Let's see here. How's that look? put it down on the tree here I think I need to come this way just a little there we go I think that looks pretty good and then we're gonna put a drop of glue on this branch here maybe could have I've got a new glue stick in here so there we go Put this up into the glue. And we'll trim those off here in a second. I think those look pretty good. Got this one kind of twisted, but I think it'll be all right. There we go. Okay, so let's trim these ends off a little bit. Like that. And then let's trim this one off a little bit. There we go. All right. And then we have to hang our quilt on the clothesline. I had these little, I already had the, now I didn't actually have a um, embellishment kit <laughs> because I, uh, I had to, to sell mine to some of my customers because I, we, they were so slow coming in. So I actually didn't even have a embellishment kit. I made all my own embell embellishments. So. So what do you think? So I'm going to grab, whoop, I'll get rid of the rest of the hot glue hairs.
but I'm going to reach back here and I'm going to turn the lights on so you can see the finished pillow. Gotta find the little switches. There's one. There it is. So what do you think, guys? So if I can pull this camera back, what do you think? So here is our finished pillow. Isn't that fun? I had a lot of fun doing this. Here's the, the last block on the end. Where, what, where's, oh, where's my new glue gun? Sorry, Lynn, I forgot, to, I didn't get it out yet. It's in the bottom of the drawer, and I haven't got it out. This is my new one. This is my old one. Actually, this one's not very old either. It's okay. What do you think? So here's the, there's the sign on the little thing here, and here's the end block. What do you think? This was really fun to do. I had such a good time doing this. I'm going to have to, um, I need to go in there and, and move my pillar around just a little bit yet, but. So I'm pretty happy with that. I had a good time doing these. So what do you think, everybody? It's done! I'm so excited. So our next um, class, next week, we'll, we will have in, um, we're going to do napkins. So we're going to have a supper class next week. So here's my napkins. So you can see it. Here's my napkin. So we, we're going to learn how to, to um, digitize these. We're going to learn a little bit about the designs, and then we're going to digitize these so you can make have a uh, placement line, and a um, so you can do more than one napkin at a time. So we're going to do that, and then um, the next two weeks will be the wall hangings, and. If you haven't ordered these, I've got this up on the website. So the next two weeks will be with a grateful heart we give thanks. And this is a Janine Babish design. So we're going to do um, these in class. I think this is really, these were really fun. It's something, I had never made one of these before. I just thought it was neat, something different. I, it's hard to find cute fall things. So I liked this. So we're going to do this one in November or in October. And then in November, we are going to do uh, Ginger's Kitchen. So we'll have another, we'll do another bench pillow. Okay. Oh, the spiral bound instructions. Yes, um, these I do myself. I have a comb binding machine. So um, you, I just print them on both sides of my paper and then I have a little comb binding machine. So then everything lays flat. I love, I love my comb binding machine. It was the best 50, 60 bucks I have, I've ever spent. So I would highly recommend them. They're not. They're they're just called a comb, C O M B comb binding machine. And you can get them on. I got mine on eBay for like 60 bucks, something like that. It was great. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions? I'll turn this around so you can see me. Maybe I'll bring my camera around here too. Does anybody have any questions? How many people got to have their pillows done? I'm so excited to see. I've seen, been seeing pillows now, so I'm really excited to see everybody else's pillows. I had a lot of fun making these. And this was, this was I have to say, this was one of the hardest um, Kimberbell projects I've ever made. They're, they're a lot of their, this one had a lot of details in it, a lot of pieces. And um, the blocks took longer than a lot of their blocks do. So I really enjoyed it. I've also enjoyed their quilts a lot. So, but this will be fun. So I'm looking forward to this next month. We're going to do with a grateful heart next month. And next week we'll do the napkins. And then we're going to have a scan and cut class at the end of November. Um, the new scan, just so you know, some of you have been asking me, I just got finally the scan and cut um, playbooks in so they have finally arrived and then um, I also just got in the new vinyl blade kits that 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 with the new vinyl blade for the scan and cut so those have just finally come in I haven't got all the new stuff but I've gotten I'm getting it um, Becky you can order the embellishment kit it's on it's pre-order and I should have them in a week or two because they um, are available just now and I'm going to order from Kimberbell this week. So I should be able to get them now. 
So yeah, you can just order it and then I will get it to you as quickly as possible. I do have the CDs, um, but the CDs came out a year ago and they didn't have an embellishment kit for it. And then they added one. So see, I, I actually bought, I just bought all the embellishments for it just recently. And then about like a week later, they announced they were going to have a kit. So I already had all the embellishments for it that I bought separately because then it costs more if you buy them separate. <laughs> so what type is needed for the, the napkins? I just used um, pre-purchased napkins, um, Cindy. Mine are just, um, actually, I borrowed them from Judy. She had napkins. They're 20-inch napkins, 18-inch napkins. I just bought napkins. So... You don't have to have anything. You can make them yourself, like with your serger or something, if you want to. But you don't need to. Okay. So we have our pillow done. It's all lit up, ready to go here. I'm gonna, I am gonna. think I'm going to shift the, the pillow form in there just a little bit. It's a little bit um, crooked in there. So. And um, next week we'll have a software class. And then the following two weeks will be the, um, the wall hanging. So. I'm looking forward to that because it, it's a really cute design. And, and it is on the website. It's called Grateful Heart. It's under Janine Babish. So if you haven't got it and you want to make it, just order it on the website. And if I don't have enough to go around, I'll order more. I've already ordered more. So, okay. If nobody has, does anybody have any more questions? Anything else that anybody needs to ask? And I will go back through and answer um, any of the questions I might have missed. So. Okay, so I'm looking forward to next week on the for the software class, and then we will move on to a, a wall hanging. So, okay, everybody, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for spending an hour or so with me on a Sunday evening. I really appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Thank you.